They won seven, lost three, and has a base hit. Second hit of the ball game for Eastler, and that keeps things alive. And brings up Ron Hasse, who, if he gets a good pitch, could do a little damage right here. It's a little bit of an influence of Dave Winfield being on the bench right here, Scooter. Oh, because oh, right, right. Chicago right. has the left hand pitcher, Joel McCune, and their ace is Bob James. But if they were to bring McCune in to face one of the Yankee left hand hitters, uh, Winfield would be the logical choice. And James is a right hander, right? James is a right hander, but uh, Fergosi would rather have Dotson going against these guys than McCune going against Winfield. All right. Two men out. Oh, almost a wild pitch. Good short hop by Carlton Fisk. One ball. Ron Hasse is 0 for 3. Lined out last time up. The other two times he bounced to second base once into a double play. Two balls, no strikes. There's Pasqua on deck. 2 0 on Hasse. 3 0. And this will undoubtedly be the last batter that uh, Dotson's going to pitch to, I would believe, if he does not get him out. <laughs> 3 0. That's Mark Hill next to Fergosi there. He's now one of the uh, coaches. Ooh. Ooh. He was backup catcher early in the year and they uh, released yes. him as a player but retained him as a coach. All right it's three and one. Throw that same pitch to Hassey now and the Yankees will be ahead. Nope got that one down and it's a full count. So Eastler will be running. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Oh man, he had his pitch that just got under it. Still three and two. Two out. Canella hoping for a minor miracle. And Fragosi. Hoping that Dotson can get Hasse out. Two out in the top of the ninth, and the White Sox lead two to one. They scored a run in the first and a run in the eighth. Nothing in between. The pitch, and hard ground to walk has got it, and that'll do it. Nothing across the final score. The White Sox two and the Yankees one. Good evening, I'm Morton Dean. A ship-shaped celebration marks the birth of a lady and the birth of a nation. The party goes on, on land, on sea, and in the air. Daytime and nighttime. I'm Brad Holbrook on Governor's Island, where we'll be watching the biggest fireworks show ever in honor of Lady Liberty. Complete coverage of the Salute to Liberty coming up right after the game. Jim Cotton, Billy Martin after tonight's game. Richard Dotson with an outstanding pitching performance defeated the Yankees 2-1. to one. Not much fireworks during the game, Billy, but did Dotson tonight look more like the pitcher that you saw the last couple of years before the surgery? That's correct, Jim. Uh, tonight's his first time he went all the way, and he was outstanding tonight. Uh, the one he gave up, what, uh, four hits? That was quite a ball game, five hits. Well, obviously, the controversial play in the game, Bob Tewksbury pitched great baseball. John Cangelosi in the bottom of the eighth inning hit a ball down the right field line. After we saw it on replay several times, a fan definitely did hit the ball ever so slightly. Do, do you have a logical complaint there in terms of a protest? Oh, or? no question about it. It's a ground rule double. All mag now is a triple, and it puts the Yankees back against the wall. Uh, I think the umpire should have seen it though, and called it with a ground rule double. And uh, really, I, I don't understand. He's close enough to see the play. I can't see how he missed it. Well, when Claudel Washington came up with the ball, he hes hesitated, obviously, thinking that. A fan had interfered and that Mike Riley saw it. Mike Riley obviously did not see that. Cangelosi went on with the triple. Ozzie Guillen 
with the sacrifice fly and uh, the Yankees uh, starting with these games against the Western Division the uh, bats were quieted tonight that's been their strong suit all seasons their offense well, Jim you know that's a tough part about this game of baseball here you get a, a great pitch ball game and you don't get any runs I mean uh, it's very frustrating for the pitcher and frustrating for the ball club well, most of the time you figure uh, as a as a pitcher with the uh, I'm sure Tewksbury went out there tonight saying if I hold this ball club to two runs in eight innings I'm going to get a victory but uh, he didn't know Richard Dotson was going to have his top game of the season. That's correct but if he pitches like this uh, in every game he's out there he's going to win an awful lot of ball games. Well right now of course Dave Winfield on the bench and Dan Pasqua has been inserted into the lineup. Is this something that you think a, a temporary rest can give a player like Winfield at an incentive or does that actually weigh more on his mind. Well I think it's going to weigh in his mind a little bit because you know he's uh, so used to playing out there every day and it's going to be hard for him to uh, accept the fact that he's going to be platooned a little bit right now. But I think uh, Lou has to do what he thinks best for the ball club and, and that's the job as a manager is very uh, not a very popular move uh, when you do a thing like that Jim but uh, you have to do what you think is right and you got to live and die in your own convictions. That's the part of about being a manager. What do you think or what I should say what do you know about Scott Nielsen the uh, young pitcher that the Yankees have recalled and incidentally for those of you who joined us late Ron get replaced on the disabled list after being struck by that line drive and Scott Nielsen who was nine and three at Columbus with a fine ERA of 298 has been called up. Well Jim he's not overpowering he's a sinker ball pitcher he has good uh, good control keeps the ball down he was uh, four and oh down in Fort Lauderdale nine and three at Columbus uh, his uh, stats are very good and uh, he's the kind of guy that will pitch to your infield and keep you in the ball game pretty strange uh, turn of events when you look at the Yankee starters right now and you say Al Polito is the dean of the staff in terms of age he's 29 years old even though he has less than uh, I think 30 days in the big leagues but all of a sudden they're trusting this season to their young pitchers not really by choice they have to that's correct uh, all of a sudden we got a kitty cord I um, mean to Dre Beck Tewksbury who did an outstanding job tonight Rasmussen has done well and uh, Polito and his starts and of course now we're going to get a look at Scott Nielsen so this I think would put a little bit added pressure on the bullpen from Lou's standpoint you certainly can't look at young pitchers and think that they're going to give you the kind of effort that Bob Tewksbury did tonight every game. Well you never know Jim uh, it could go a reverse too. the only young guys could come out there and be pumped up a little bit the fact that they're with the Yankees and might give you that little bit of extra out there that you need right at this time and uh, I know that Lou Pinella liked uh, uh, him very much in the past and he's been asking for him to Nielsen come up so now he's coming up and let's just hope he does a good job for us. All right the last time we were in Chicago the big talk was that maybe Billy Martin would be manager of the White Sox and of course now the White Sox have made that change and Jim Fergosi is there. What do you know about Jim Fergosi as a manager. Well I think he's a very good manager. I, I managed against him when he was out in California. He's a very aggressive manager. He knows his baseball. He, he manages like he played. He was an aggressive player and uh, I'm just happy for him that he's got this opportunity to back in the major leagues again. And well we mentioned that Tony La Russa, the manager that was here another good friend of yours has taken his uh, favorite pitching coach Dave Duncan and of course he is the new manager of the Oakland A's. So uh, we're still getting and the situation here in Chicago the players were extremely happy with La Russa and all the comments where they were very happy to see him get another opportunity. Well that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Although you don't like to hear anything about a player when a manager leaves. They always sometimes knock him a little bit. I hate to see that. If they can't say anything nice don't say anything period. Well and we're going to say a few more things. We'll come back right after these messages. If you missed the first couple of innings the White Sox got a run in the bottom of the first. Ron Kittle hit a slider from Bob Tewksbury for a single to right to make it one nothing Sox. But in the second, Pagliarulo drove a fastball from Dotson to the opposite field and a strong wind carried it into the lower deck to tie the score. We'll have complete highlights of the Yanks, the Mets victory at Shea, the men's semis at Wimbledon, and the big fireworks display on the Independent News right after the game. Now the White Sox two, the Yankees won in the opener of this three game series and the controversial play Billy we're going to get a look at is when John Cangelosi leading off the bottom of the eighth off Bob Tewksbury hit a ball right down the right field line and it appeared that several fans fell out of the stands one did touch the ball Claudel Washington fielded the ball then hesitated because he thought umpire Mike Riley would call fan interference. Let's get a look at it here right here right and your here, comments Jim. on it. Here is it right here. Now watch how the ball jumps away after this fan jumps out there. 
Now, as you see, the ball was touched right there. It was touching it, deep, it chromed off there. I mean, I, how can the umpire miss a play like that, really? I, I give the umpire credit, but uh, when, you, when you blow a play right in front of you like that, Jim, that's ridiculous, really. Well, we see Claudell comes up with the ball, and he hesitates a little bit because he anticipated the interference call would be made. You, you cannot really take that one play and say that lost the ball game. The game would have been played differently. The White Sox would then have had Cangelosi at second, no outs. Instead of Guillen uh, swinging away, they would have had him in a bunt situation. Whether he laid the bunt down or not, we'll never know. That's exactly right. You know, he could have popped the bunt up. You could have got a double play on the bunt. A lot of things could have happened, but there's no excuse for missing a play right in front of you like that, Jim. And I, I just don't understand how he blew that play. I'm not making excuses for it. Uh, if it was for the other side, you'd like to see it be right. Well, and of course, there's a lot of talk in baseball about using video replays, as we've seen right there, to rectify umpires' decisions, right or wrong. Now, you've had your share of battles with umpires over the past. Would you like to see umpires have to use video, or you like to keep the human element in the game? I like to keep the human element in the game, Jim, but also I like to see another umpire overrule the other umpire, say, hey, you missed it. He did touch the ball and change it like I've had it happen to me a couple of times with the umpires and the Billy you want it right even though it's going to go against you Billy but it's right I say hey that's okay part just as long as you're honest about it and get it right for both sides of course one of the things uh, in this ballpark and I'm sure you've experienced this is out in left field on a questionable home run you'll have fans reaching over the railing over the wall out there and an umpire that's will correct. have to run out from the infield make a judgment whether they, whether it was a double or a home run so this ballpark is not without controversy on plays like that. Jim, if the umpire doesn't run off to the side one way or the other, he can't really see what the fan does. But if he runs off to the side, he can see the interference. But usually they run in direct line, and that's where they run into trouble. And I think that's what happened on this play right here. He ran in a direct line when he called the thing instead of being off to the side where he could see the fan touch the ball. All right, it's the White Sox two and the Yankees one. Fine job by Richard Dotson. Equally fine job by Bob Tewksbury in tonight's ball game. And that's it from Comiskey Park in Chicago. We'll be.